If you look at my 2009 race, the year I got fourth, it was probably my greatest ever performance in Kona. I'd ridden through the group, I had a terrible swim, I'd ridden seven minutes quicker than the guys, had a three minute lead on the major runners, Craig and Andreas Raylert. Opened up some time on a leaky drive and uh, really fell apart on the, on the run up to the energy lab and uh, was cramping badly, was vomiting, felt sick and had to walk. Now the 2002, 2003, 2004 Chris McCormack stops the race. He had no strength of character. The 2009 athlete soldiered on. I ran the last 10 kilometres, three minutes quicker than anyone in the field. I ran myself into fourth place, four minutes from the win. And I crossed the line, shook Craig Alexander's hand. But for me, as, a, as an athlete, he doesn't have the first place finish. But it's my greatest performance in Kona. Did I quit on myself? No, I didn't. Did I get first? No, I didn't. Am I ecstatic about that race? Absolutely. For me, when I hear defeat, I, I'm very deflated from a performance or my effort. I talk to my kids all the time about the two things that they can control in life. You know, it's their attitude and their effort. And when I'm defeated, I wasn't able to give my best effort. Getting beaten when you performed well is one thing, getting beaten when you've underperformed, yeah, that, that hurts. It hurts a lot because at this point in my career with the experience I have, if you make the wrong decision, yeah, it hurts It hurts a lot. You feel like you haven't done your job. I've had a lot of that struggle in the sport. Um, I look at it as a chance to become a better athlete. Um, and instead of kind of sulking in everything that went wrong, um, step back and then reevaluate. What tends to happen is the way you perceive a performance or a result is different to the way everybody else perceives it. And obviously as a professional athlete you get judged on where you cross the finish line, you get paid according to where you cross the finish line, and sometimes you can tie your whole, I guess, identity up to that, whereas I think at some point I've realised that it's, you can't win all the time. I've learnt to respect that, that you can't win every time, but you can give your damn heart and soul into trying to win every time, and that's what I do. And so for me, defeat, um, I didn't used to be so gracious about it. <laughs> but I, I, over the years, I've become to, you know, I've learned a lot about myself and, and how I perform and those rare occasions when everything does line up and when everything does come together. Um, you, you just got to embrace that and, and take every defeat as a learning curve to getting to that, that kind of zen moment where you win a race. When I first signed on to be a professional triathlete, it was pretty funny because no one told me about the low aspect. You know, it was like, oh, you're going to be a pro triathlete. You get free race entries, cool gear. You get to go to tropical places like Hawaii to race. But no one ever told me about sort of the, the lows. And um, surprisingly to me, I've, I've hit a few lows in my career. And they brought me to low points in my life that I didn't even know really existed. And um, one of them last year was being injured and not being able to get out and do my job or and exercise, something that I just do for enjoyment and for health. When I'm injured and I've, I've had an injury recently and I was also sick early in the year where I couldn't do anything and I couldn't race and uh, it puts me into a, into a hole. So I feel defeated more, not by my opponents, but um, the boundary set by my own body. And it's just like within 20 seconds, that confidence and that, um, you know, worry, your, your goals shift, your goals go from I want to try to win Vegas and I want to love to win Kona too. I really hope that I am going to be able to breathe without pain. There's a fine line, like I think you can be afraid of that. And I think I'm kind of, and I think that can hold you back if you're, if I'm constantly afraid of, of not being able to get back to that level. I start to question, you know, myself and if I, personally have what it takes to excel. 
I certainly felt defeated a lot when I was playing basketball. I'm not the largest person <laughs> and certainly was one of the smaller athletes on the team and and sometimes it felt like it didn't, no matter, didn't matter how much I worked or how hard I trained or how much you know work I did off the court. I was overlooked a lot for a taller player who was a lot less fit, a lot less coordinated, but had a foot on me. So for me, that was always heartbreaking. When I'm really defeated, I look at it and say I'm a bad person, which I know isn't true. I always think there's light at the end of the tunnel and I'm not subjecting myself to anything that I'm not in control of. And that's what drew me to triathlon. Um, you know, you put in the work, you get the results. You know, you can always find, always try and look for something good about the situation. You can honestly live with it. It's like 09 for me, fourth place in Kona. My best ever performance. I couldn't have done another thing, beaten by three better guys. But does that mean I don't stand up the next day and put my hand up and say, give me another shot at the title? No way. Defeat means reassess, rebuild, chase again. And you know, I think you, you learn more out of defeat than you do success because sometimes success makes you overlook things.